Hey everyone, what to talk about this week? Well, I was initially encouraged by Boris Johnson saying that the world needs to unite against a common foe, and I initially thought, was it time to go to war with Germany again? It's been a while after all, I guess, and I guess it's the only way you're going to be able to fly overseas right now, in the back of an Atlas C1. What else? Well, there's a recent rule of six law, which could very well lead to a murder at the home of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, as they frantically try to avoid a visit by the police. If you're wondering why he's called Happy, it's because he now owns a three-seventh stake ownership in the mine. But the big news this last past week was the battle over the US Supreme Court, as compared to the Supreme Food Court at my local shopping place, which offers half a dozen types of cuisine, all of it fried and all at wildly marked up prices. The last week or so, though, saw Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg pass away, meaning that President Trump and the Republican-controlled Senate will be appointing a new justice, and their pick is Amy Barrett. She's a staunch Catholic to the extent that you wonder whether or not the Pope really is Catholic, in comparison at least. Although I'd have thought that religion in Washington went along very well, you know, like when they look at the deficit and pray for a miracle, or when people are asked to give generously in bundles of money or exchange, no questions asked. Anyway, Justice Barrett's appointment would make the court conservative leading for the next decade or two. And the left or right thing is of course madness, so judicial proceedings should be non-political, but the US has for decades almost purposely drafted dubious laws on the basis that the courts can sort it out because they're not up for election in 10 months. Nancy Pelosi once famously said that Obamacare had to be passed quote, to find out what's in it, in the process almost making a comparison between healthcare and a lottery scratch card, although I guess in the US both the lottery and healthcare both do end up with someone else getting very rich at your expense. Of course, the largest part of this story is that the court is almost certainly going to be deciding the result of the presidential election, as it did in the Gore v. Bush election back in 2000, which ironically featured about 2,000 lawyers. Alas, 2020 will not be so kind, with everyone seeing this one as one of the most pivotal, by which I mean litigious, elections ever. Three points of interest I found in all of this. Number one, President Obama apparently asked Ginsburg to step down a number of years ago so that he could appoint a new and very young left-leaning judge who could stick around for decades in her place. Apparently she said no because she viewed it as a lifetime job and not a political appointment. And presumably the concept of seriousness and integrity was lost on the president, who at the time was talking about the Benghazi incident in the same way that a 12-year-old talks about what they got up to in Minecraft over the weekend. Number two, Justice Ginsburg on the topic of Roe v. Wade and abortion rights. She actually stated in 1992 that she thought the decision had been a misstep and she'd rather the ruling had been different in order for it to force the politicians to sort it out in law and not in the courts. And no matter what you think about her politics, you have to admire someone telling a bunch of people to do their job instead of passing the buck. Number three, though, the appointment will be a majority of one, possibly two. And the thing is, not only the Senate needs a 60 to 40 result in order to guarantee passing a law, it's why it's so unproductive, it's purposely designed so that only bipartisan laws can be passed. But the one situation where that isn't the case is in Supreme Court justices, and that's a more recent thing than you'd expect. The change was only actually put in place by President Obama and Harry Reid several years ago, who were in a bit of a tight spot and wanted to force through a procedural change when they couldn't get their way in appointing a controversial judge. You know, the only way, therefore, that this current situation could be more ironic would be if the new choice of female court justice was Alanis Morissette. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.